Toronto, let's just keep talking. Okay. Welcome back. Next up, we have to us from CERN talking about how they manage their uh, CentOS desktops. Thanks for coming. So, yes, uh, uh, in general, we always start talking about that. The microphone doesn't seem to work. Uh, was it? Yes. Uh, Yes. So usually when we start our call with some impressive numbers uh, with the data center, so we say Let, let's do it anyway. Yeah. Uh, but um, uh, I wanted to address the uh, center dojo people asked me uh, to talk about something different, the desktops, because they were like, ah, you have a lot of desktops, how do you configure them, how to do stuff? So I decided that uh, I will do a talk different this year, but I still show you that we have uh, over 230 calls now in our data center. And uh, I will do a bit of promotion for our, our colleagues that uh, write, uh, they don't write up, but now they reboot the whole cloud because of Spectre and Meltdown. So if you're interested, go for it. It's a nice read. So, the so talk now. Uh, desktop uh, overview. So I will just give you an idea of what we're doing internally. So we have a CentOS uh, distribution. We can call it a RISPIN, basically. So, uh, it's exactly the same package uh, as CentOS, we don't touch the package and we just provide a new repository. So basically uh, they have two repository configured on top of CentOS, which is CERN and CERN only. We have a repository CERN only where we have commercial software that we can't uh, publish to the outside and all the tools that we do uh, for managing desktop are in the CERN uh, repository and this is available to everybody. It's a uh, public uh, thing. Uh, we stage updates. So we are doing updates once a week instead of uh, when it's up uh, by central. So we stage all the updates of the current week and on Thursday we release these updates. So this is to uh, allow time uh, to people to test. So basically uh, we have a testing repository and people can enable it. They can test the update as they are released by CentOS. And uh, every Thursday we sync that so uh, the production get all the updates in one go. So that was uh, very appreciated by our clients. And um, we have internal snapshot as well, but it's not uh, much of interest for this talk, but we, we provide snapshot of a day so people can stay a bit in the future, but they are not a bit in the past, sorry, but they are not supported in terms of support. So it's just a matter of if someone has a problem, he can stay for like a few days on snapshot and then uh, move to the problem when it's fixed. Uh, we have a tool called Roadmap that is, uh, that is configuring uh, basically uh, the desktop. So we are using the puppet module developed by our colleague in the data center and we are running them masterless on the desktop. So there's a little Python wrapper around the puppet log map that is doing that and showing uh, to showing to the user a nice interface to configure and what they need on the desktop after they did the first boot, for example. I can show you quickly uh, what it looks like. So basically this is the module we are shipping now. So you have a different uh, list of modules. Uh, here we go. So we have we enable cameras on most of our machines. So this is what we use for, for authentication user. We have our home on open IFS, or is it on AFS, so we enable AFS as well. And basically, we are trying to move our home directory to new new generation. Like uh, Sandbox is basically um, on cloud. It's called uh, Sandbox uh, internally. Uh, CVMFS is a repository for software, scientific software. And we have EOS as well, which is uh, another storage uh, file system that we're trying to develop. It's not stable yet, but we start to provide it to the clients so they can test it. So everybody can configure uh, the desktop with a simple code uh, in the non disable module. And uh, behind it's uh, Puppet running. Any questions so far? Anything you'd like to know about that? No? Okay. So uh, let's move. Just to give you an overview of what we use from CentOS, we are fond of the SIGs. So mainly the Cloud SIGs is uh, running our 20. Or 7,000 uh, 7, hypervisor, 
Uh, as you think, uh, Jarek, that is at the end of the room, is uh, giving a few soft operations, maintaining a few collections uh, in there. And uh, we really like uh, the dev tool set uh, to get newer GCC and think for the scientists. is really helpful because we have a lot of training happening at CERN, and basically now we can just uh, have one machine with different versions of GCC. And the trainer can show the improvement if you use this kind of option. So for us, it was a big uh, game changer. And in the past, we were rebuilding that internally ourselves from Red Hat So win-win now it's done in the public. And uh, let's thank Onza. He's not here, but uh, he's doing a lot of work in the CLO thing. Uh, that's pretty much it at the moment. But now this is what we would like to have in a future. Basically, Ceph for the moment, uh, we don't use this. We use Ceph for a big, uh, few big uh, clusters, but we don't uh, use a storage SIG now. So we are looking at if it makes sense or not, but uh, so far it was hard to convince uh, the op team uh, to, to, to use the SIG, but uh, I still want to. Puppet, we are running as well Puppet, but uh, we are running it from upstream, so we will be looking in the config management SIG as well. <laughs> and the final is that Arch will be really interested in running uh, different Arch. It's been a bit delayed because uh, we don't have all the resources we would like to, to do that, but uh, it's something uh, that uh, I hope we can say next CentOS Dojo that we are using it now. Uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, so this is few numbers now. Uh, we have set 1,000 desktop workstation orders spread across sites that are doing updates every day. So it means that uh, we have 7,000 devices that are managed by users, not by us. So this is, uh, this is what we are aiming, aiming to configure with uh, masterless puppet. Uh, there are around 2,000 CentOS 7 desktop upgrading uh, every night. And of course, uh, it's small comparison to the total number because a lot of uh, the experiments are still running scientific Linux 600 desktop because the run, uh, we stop uh, the LHC for a big upgrade next year, beginning of 2019, for two years. And then we will see a big <laughs> people migrating to CentOS 7 and start reporting problems saying, ah, it doesn't work for me, it doesn't work for that. So it will be a fun, uh, a fun uh, moment. Uh, as I mentioned and showed you before, uh, Lop Lopmap is configuring and uh, written in Python. Uh, it can configure any machine. Uh, it gets all data from our Active Directory, and from um, we have a network equipment to allow device on on the Sun network. So that it's querying that for who is responsible or who is the user of the equipment and can configure his account automatically. So one of the modules basically just adds the account to the machine depending on what uh, what uh, what field the Active Directory held. Then I will move to the interesting part of the Anaconda add-on. So, who ever used Anaconda to do an add-on for the install? Who had to con configure the install? Nobody? Okay, the same So, Anaconda is a set of scripts. It's a, it's a big set of scripts with a lot of hacks as well. But um, it's configuring, uh, it's the installation platform basically for RHEL and Fedora. Both are using the same uh, same tool, and uh, in the past we needed to add an add-on to when the user, a standard user, doing a desktop, to, you have a graphical interface, and you want him to be able to configure his desktop uh, in a graphical way. So we had a tool in the past uh, based on first boot, which was Red Hat tool to do that, but it was deprecated for a new tool, which is called Initial Setup, and Initial Setup uses Anaconda add-on. So basically you can code an add-on that will be usable in the whole installation process, not only for first boot or for something else. So this is the, I will try to show you how we did that. Any questions? Okay. So just what it looks like. So this is what uh, the final result you look like. Here at first boot you normally have the license as well, which is another add-on. And our add-on now is here, and uh, basically I put some, uh, some bit of vocabulary in the Anaconda, in the Anaconda uh, like, uh, words. So this is called a spoke, and the whole set of spoke and windows is called a hub. 
So this is really flexible. It means that this port can be used as the installation as well, because you see at the installation you have the kind of the same interface, so we can uh, reuse and, uh, and... This specific spoke I will show you is a first boot spoke, so it's configured to only show up when you are at first boot. But that's on purpose, because uh, we, we don't want people to configure this option uh, before uh, the first boot installation time. Uh, the Scientific Linux guy did a really nice add-on, if you need an example, if you want to develop one, they did a really nice add-on as well to configure more software at the beginning of the installation. So that would be another example that you can have a look uh, to the called the context, and basically you can choose the context of how you install your system. And I think the idea is really, really neat. Um, just to show you, so yeah, you see that I have zero critical skill. <laughs> So this is part of not being a programmer. So this is not, I'm working on that on getting it uh, in, a, in a better state. So basically, it asks the user, what do you want to configure? Do you want to try the new file system uh, that we provide? Do you want to automatic check updates? Or I don't want to do any setup. I will not run that CERN, so I will just uh, run automatic updates, nothing else. Just to, as a reminder, in the boot order, basically, what is going on. So, initial setup is the tools that are uh, reading uh, the, the plugins, basically. So, where you accept the license, where you got your user. And uh, so, you run the initial setup, which run the add-on. And later in the process, we have a system, the uh, service that, uh, unit, sorry, that uh, is running the tool that really configure everything. So basically, Cern Anaconda is working, uh, the add-on is uh, writing to a file and LockMap is reading from there to know what uh, the user choose. Why don't we run LockMap directly in the Cern add-on? Because uh, it's not that we try, and there's no way to have a nice, uh, a nice way in GTK to tell the user wait while it's configuring. It, I, I didn't manage to do it correctly, and it was always a bit clunky because you only need to do the execute part of the plugin when you click on finish. So when you click on finish, the thing will become gray, and then it waits. And if uh, some other option take over like two, three minutes to install because there's a lot of package to install as well, so we decided to have a separate service to to run basically the real code. And the separate service is run uh, after the initial setup, uh, thanks to systemd. Uh, something I, I, I love to, to use to do this debug with the other is the system the analyze that show you how your boot process is working. So if one day you need to know in which order it boot, system the analyze is here for you. And it's very, very helpful, especially when you debug uh, this kind of add-on and problems. Uh, so I will show you the module tree. Can we read it? Yes? Yes. So awesome. So basically uh, the module this is my git, and uh, we have the spec file, that's something uh, we, we build the as a RPM, of course. Uh, and then in the module itself has a few things. You have categories where you can define in which category you want uh, to be, so we will go come back to that. You have some constant, where I define constant uh, like every Python project, pretty much. And uh, after the important part is the KS part and the GUI part. As you see, we didn't do the TUI part yet. We didn't go to that uh, yet. Uh, this is something that we'd like to have because it's nicer when you do a text install on the server and we want the TUI instead of uh, fix out. But uh, this time it's not available. Um, here you see the spoke. So don't forget to put an init.p in every sub here, otherwise you will not see anything. Uh, it's very important to to know that uh, Anaconda forces you to support kickstart. It means that you can't write the data done without the kickstart part, because everything must be doable for kickstart. So the only thing that you, if you want to call an add-on, it will be always a kickstart uh, option. Basically. You will be need this kickstart option. And uh, the Wii is, uh, is something that you may or may not want to add. For us, it was really important to have it. Um, then the standard thing apply, you need the pep8 and pep257 for dot strings. Uh, it's what uh, Red Hat asked uh, to in the doc. So, yeah, just run it on your git workflow. Uh, kickstart. Uh, so, kickstart. Uh, basically, uh, you have an add on class, 
data where you have all the data that you want to share across uh, all the module. So you do this add-on data, and the add-on data will be something like that when you look at your kickstart. So basically, you can add arguments here, minus minus something, or you can add lines in between the ends. And here you can do whatever you want, store whatever you want. It doesn't matter um, what, uh, what is possible. Then, end of headers, it takes a list of arguments. So this is the function that you need to code to read the option, the arguments that are here. And under line is the function you need to, 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 to code to do the single line of function between the add-ons. So we don't use the second one at this time. We did everything with a list of arguments, but we are not close to, if we did something more complex in the future, to, to use it as well. Then, uh, yeah, we're just showing you basically how works the handle headers. So basically here you see that uh, you define option. So the IFS client option, as you saw earlier, or the auto update option. You define it like you would do a CLI basically in Python. It's pretty similar. And uh, as you see, the outcome is something like that. You have the person add-on, R add-on, and all the options you choose to, to use for this installation. So this is what you need to add to your Kickstart file if you want to use our add-on uh, uh, like, uh, not interactively. That's it. Now, um, last thing about the Kickstart is how it works. So basically you have a setup function, an execute function, and a mandatory function. And um, mandatory, it's obvious, it basically says, it's like the license you see uh, when you have the license uh, spoke, you see there's a little triangle, yellow, saying that you can't continue if you don't choose it. So if you if you use this mandatory thing, it will allow to have the same uh, icon on your add-on. And uh, execute is basically the thing that uh, is executing the change to the system. And setup is pre-installation. So basically what we run is in execute. All the log map uh, and write to the file are uh, run uh, in, the, well, in the execute uh, function. Indeed. So that's pretty much it for the kickstart. In terms of GUI, so as I said before, you need to do this uh, to instantiate a normal spoke. So this is where we differ from other available add-on. We did that as the first boot only spoke mixing. So if you do that, basically, it will not show anywhere else in the installation process. So this is, uh, this is the only trick compared to the example you get in Fedora and uh, other place. Um, we define our blade file. So you, you cannot edit on rel 7.4 or cento 7.4 your blade file. It crashed with uh, segmentation 4. We report it to Red Hat. It's not yet fixed, maybe in 7.5. So you have to fire your best Fedora just to, <laughs> to edit the Glade uh, file. But uh, I hope it will be fixed. It's been reported uh, in Bugzilla to Red Hat directly. So hopefully we'll have. But at this time, you, you just need uh, to use a different, uh, a different Glade version. And uh, it works perfectly. Uh, that's pretty much it. And basically, here you interact with the data. So as you see in the init, you have the data. And the data is the tree of the kickstart. So you have everything you have uh, in the kickstart uh, in memory tree, you can uh, you can access here with the data and you can code whatever you want. So that's up to you. And then you define your handlers uh, as and we I think I have a test of it, I didn't. Okay. And you define your handlers that uh, will uh, will help you to have a checkbox uh, click and to know what to do on checkbox and when it's clicked this way, that way. Basic GDK programming. So I'm not a very good programmer. I'm more of a sysadmin, right? So you will see the code. Tell me if I did something wrong. Yeah. But uh, so far we didn't have that many crashes. It seems to work. So I'm pretty happy with the end result. Um, I added something in the Git um, repo. Is a way to test uh, on your desktop um, basically your initial setup because uh, you don't want to install a new machine every time or reconfigure the machine reboot. 
And uh, it was not that easy to run it uh, out of the box, so I created a little run script and modified a few options in two scripts that exist on the machine. With, uh, I added debug and things like that uh, across the script. So if you run, you can see the change and diff compared to your system. If you want the change, I didn't put it here, but uh, there was trivial change about debug blocks and things like that. And so basically you can just uh, run run and uh, it will show you the thing. I will try to do this live demo now. Just showing you how it works. So let's do this. Contact. There you go. You have uh, what you've been developing, and you can see uh, and play with your add-on without having to reboot the machine and things like that. So as you see here, we force the user to, to go. Even if we have a default configuration, we want the user to go in and to check what he wants. Because as we're planning to migrate the home directory, uh, we want to we want to to. We want the user to be aware of what he's choosing, so we force the user to go in the customization, and then you can see the customization, and you can uh, basically change anything you want, up and do and done. And here you go. And then you configure and you can click on finish, which is here. And if you want, you can relaunch it later. So this was uh, something that was very useful when I was uh, developing the other. Uh, that's pretty much it. And then, of course, you need to package it. So, no, nothing really complicated. You just need to put the files where they belong for Anaconda to find them. And uh, so I put only the files part, but you can see uh, the whole spec file in the directory, in the git uh, thing, if you would like. And basically, you just uh, have two different here, one for the icon and one for anaconda add-ons. And that's pretty much it, I think. I have a few prominent links. So the first one is the Git uh, where we develop uh, the tool. Uh, the second one is our website for Linux CC7, if you want to know more about it. And uh, I put two really interesting uh, GitHub uh, repo, which is the first one is from uh, Red Hat, and this is the Hello World. And you can find the documentation at the bottom in the same uh, GitHub place. And these two uh, were really, really helpful when you develop to have a concrete example to know how it works. And, uh, to so you know that you're not doing crazy things and you have a nice template and you know everything has been, uh, every function has the doc string already so you can copy past that, it's really nice. And that's pretty much it on my side. Uh, do you have any questions? Yes. Uh, you repeat the question. Uh, okay, so my question is, uh, do you have add-ons which are used during installation time, and how you go about you know, packaging them into the installation media, uh, testing them, developing them? So, what is the question again? Sorry, I didn't get Do you have add-ons uh, that are used during installation time? No, not yet. Not yet. Uh, we, we could, because for the moment, as we are a remix of uh, a respin of CentOS, we are adding the package in the way we respin when we respin the ISO and the thing. So we have our group package list that is added, and then user can select CERN workstation, which is the default. But in long term, as we want to modify less and less, it would be a nice approach as well to be able to do that. But so it's not done yet. But uh, as I said, if uh, the scientific Linux guy have a really nice concept on how they did it, if you want to have a look, for example, because it's really well documented as well. Okay, thanks. Anybody else? Yes. Hi, Thomas. So uh, it's not about Anaconda Adam itself, but uh, the way you manage this stuff, do you use central, something centralized? Like you said, you mentioned. Um, uh, active directory for the source of authentication within SEM. Um, is there some kind of group policy like for your desktop? 
No, uh, through DCAM, on how you distribute something that you enforce, like what they do, whether the proxy settings, or, or you don't enforce anything, people can just do whatever they want on the desktop. Yes, we don't enforce anything because there's a big, uh, as well, bring your own device culture at CERN, and people are free to do uh, what they want on the desktop, they have their root access. So at this time, we don't do it. Now, uh, it may change in the future. But uh, at this time, we just configure uh, Kerberos so they can access their services and uh, they can log into the machine at code root, basically uh, in terms of Active Directory and the whitelisting of the device on the network is done by the other database and that's uh, something that has been developed internally. So I didn't put a link to logmap code because the logmap code is not that interesting because it's something really specific to CERN that can't really be reused. I mean, this is this is something we code for our needs, uh, but you can find on the same link where is the, the GitLab link, you will find the log map as well if you want to have a look on how we're doing it through Puppet. But it's really simple wrapper, basically, that just takes with Puppet, and the Puppet module are developed by, um, by other team at CERN. Thank so you. Next to the question, yes. I guess that because people have all access on the desktop, you, have, you don't have to provide yourself some kind of External repository that all the desktop people want, like codec thing, like a payment bag or whatever. So we we ship Nux desktop to all okay. users. So we that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But this is uh, we were we were we tried that in Fusion. We tried different, but uh, at this time uh, at the time of 7.0, it was uh, basically uh, the only available. So we. Every desktop has access to the Nux uh, repo. Is it enabled by default? Yeah, like maybe no. Do you Nux desktop? Do we enable by default? Yes, enabled by default. Yeah, so it's enabled by default. So they don't even need to. Do it. Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah, regarding the Puppet uh, Masterless. Just for the video. Okay. Sorry. <coughs> Um, you're using a uh, masterless um, configuration. Um, how do you play all the changes you use? Uh, GitLab, uh, Git. Uh, we we use RPM, so yeah, we give, we use GitLab. Basically, everything is in GitLab, but we ship them as <coughs> RPM because we want to to know which version is updated when. <coughs> the problem of not managing centrally is if we do a mistake, we need a way to upgrade, right? Because we can't go back. I mean, there's users that will never downgrade to a version, we can't force them to downgrade. So, but we can, we, we kind of force them to use auto-updates. So it means that uh, if we do something wrong, our only way to, to reach a lot of people is to set the newer RPM that will erase the previous one. So everything is shipped by RPM. This is something that we really want to do because we have a mechanism to do updates and RPM uh, and YUM is a uh, way to go and write that. So we didn't want to, to pull from Git directly was kind of uh, not uh, not really efficient uh, for our use case at least. Okay, and for the distribution of the RPMs, something like the space walk or do do? we use Koji. Okay. So basically, we build everything. So we have a GitLab workflow. We put in place. It's quite new. Last week we did a <coughs> code version with some uh, friends from the config team, and we have a GitLab workflow that builds the RPM in Koji. And then we have a manual task at the end of the GitLab workflow that you can type this package and it puts it to one of the repos. Now, it's not done for the main distro. For the main distro, we still have some script, but we would like uh, for the CERN and CERN only repo in the future, maybe doing that. Uh, everything, uh, you just commit to Git and you don't need to do anything unless you want to tag it as production. And so, if you're interested in this thing as well, I can share. We have. Uh, I, I'm not sure it's shared already because it's really new, but uh, the GitLab uh, YAML file can be shared to see how we do it, and uh, the Koji installation doc uh, can be shared if you need it, but uh, the, the upstream doc is really well done, and they read it, it's really awesome, so, and uh, we are, I'm doing as well the support of the CBS instance in CentOS, so yeah, if you have questions about Koji or GitLab uh, CI, don't hesitate. I have a question about uh, wait, 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 wait. the mic. Okay. Yes. Um, I have a question about uh, developing the uh, Anaconda Hadden. Uh, since it's not something that is done frequently, uh, 
Do you, do, you, do you think that uh, there are features like in the past server you would have liked to see in Anaconda? Or is it uh, good enough as it is? Uh, I think one of my complaints and that I think it's not done yet is how you give feedback to the user from the, from the installation. Like uh, if I want, uh, instead of executing on finish the add-on initial setup, would it be possible to have like a nice uh, timer that says, please wait, uh, we are fetching that, we are fetching that, because I couldn't, I didn't find any example, and in the talk, I'm not good at GTK either, I did about GTK in my life, it was the first time I had to do some GTK, so I don't know, but uh, apart from that, it's good, uh, I mean, uh, this is far better than the first boot uh, that we had before, uh, what initial setup replaces basically, so no, I don't see any features that are really missing, and then it's a concept, because something that was a bit frustrating is I tried in system D to launch my lock map service configuring through the input of the tool, but for example, you can't pause system D to ask for a user, do you want to do the updates or not, because we had that in the past, right? But system D, it's impossible to tell system D to ask the user a question. It's not possible. And Leonard wrote in the beginning that no, it's not possible, it will be never possible. So, <laughs> okay, so then system D, because in the past we just had the same, uh, same uh, workflow, but when it was running, the user could cancel updates if you wanted to boot faster. And then with system D, we can't do it. So we just drop the feature. But this is not more related to system D than RH installer. I guess for the first few that you can do it, but uh, it's probably not documented. Okay, so, okay. Yeah, that would be nice to have example. I think this is what is missing in this game. But I don't know if many people develop, uh, maybe you know better being at Red Hat, if many customers develop add-ons because uh, if you look online, you have scientific Linux that did one, you have the CADAM add-on, you have this uh, security policy add-on, I can't remember how it's called. Scale? Open scale? Yeah. Exactly, and this is a very good example because it's very complex in terms of UI. So this is a good example to look at if you need to do more complex GTK things. Yeah, that's all. Oh, that's, that's a question because not many people are doing it, and uh, I suspect that they have issues, similar issues. And uh, since you are too few, you don't, you don't uh, the developer doesn't get often the feedback. So it's really interesting to see uh, how you are able to do it and. How, uh, what were your difficulties? Okay, thank you. Yeah, and if anybody knows uh, the Red Hat guy, tell them to, to call us and to ask. No problem. The mic, please. Last question. Or not last. Ah, no, sorry. That's two questions. Huh? <laughs> it's not actually a question, it's uh, an answer to his question. Uh, so I my job has been testing Anaconda for the last 10 years. And there aren't that many people who develop problems and give feedback and report both yeah. okay. to answer your question. Yeah, that, that's why it's important to be to have that discussion. Yeah, I will, I will talk with you maybe if you need to start just to You should have a one-on-one -on -one conversation. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you know, are there any plans to add uh, more file systems to the RSP like uh, the scientific Linux set? Um, I don't know what they have, but uh, certainly if we uh, if we need to add more, we can. Well, what are you thinking about, basically? Um, I'm just uh, curious uh, in the difficulties, with, uh, the differences between uh, the scientific Linux and the new set of PlayStation. Okay, uh, but basically this is just a configuration tool, right? The package are the same, behind yeah, the file system are the same. What we put in this tool is the main file system we want to use in the next years. So this is what we use at CERN, right? Mm -hmm. Th this was the question or? I mean, you can rephrase because maybe it didn't get exactly the question. Um, it's just uh, um, how different is uh, the CentOS Respin and the scientific Linux? It's uh, it's very different because there's two teams developing it, so people put in what they want. They put the respin in, in Fermi. Uh, they have their own uh, respin after. There's SL scientific Linux for everybody, and there's SL scientific Linux Fermilab, where they do the same. They add all the repos and stuff. I don't know if they do a full respin of that. And there's scientific Linux in Daisy, in, the, in, um, in Germany as well. 
So everybody is a different team and they develop what they want. So we don't have interaction with that. I, I, I know they did this, uh, this uh, uh, add-on for the installation time because they presented in one of our conference, so I know, and I checked the code because it was really helpful to develop uh, mine. Okay. Thank you. That's okay, no more questions? Thank you so much for coming.